outside there. It's such a nice day that we thought we'd come out and fly our kites. But what is the connection between this kite and this? Let's find out in this, the first edition of Young Eagles. <laughs> Young Eagles is a new web TV show from the Museum of Army Flying. We'll be here with a new show each month with great stories of soldiers in the air. So what's the connection between the kites and the helicopters? Hugh, maybe you'd better tell us. Well, this is how the Army Air Corps first started. The original soldiers in the air were hanging from kites. As far back as 1900, the Army were experimenting with man-lifting kites. These were invented by Samuel Franklin Cody. Cody was an American showman who came to the UK full of ideas. He soon moved on to developing balloons and these were used in the First World War to give a good aerial view of the battlefield. Cody was a busy man and he also worked on developing the British Army's first planes. So let's have a look at the rest of the history of army flying. World War II saw the formation of the Glider Pilot Regiment and the museum here in Wallop is now the regiment's home. On August 10, 1944, the Supreme Commander General Eisenhower announced the formation of the first Allied Airborne Army. He said of this army at that time, through your effective employment, we will end the war far more quickly than we could without you. Thus it was that in September 1944, the aircraft and gliders of the 1st Allied Airborne Army lay marshalled on the airfields of Britain, waiting for action, waiting for the greatest airborne operation ever to be undertaken. And we'll be talking to pilots who flew these amazing gliders into battle. This is the Oster, a much smaller plane, but it had a big role to play in the D-Day landings. In Normandy, and later at Arnhem, the army commanders needed to have a good view of the fast-changing battlefield. And the Oster provided them with that view. It could operate from rough fields close to the front line and radio reports back to the troops on the ground. It was also small enough that it could be easily hidden from the enemy's view. We'll be meeting some of the pilots and taking the air in one of these planes. And let's have a word from our resident scientist. Now along the way there have been some interesting inventions, but some of which have not made it into regular service. What's our test pilot working on today? This is the Hafner Rotor Buggy. It's an American Jeep fitted with rotor blades and you can see one here at the museum. Technically, it's not a helicopter, it's an autogyro, and I'll explain the difference in a later show. But look, it's flying! This was an early success for Raoul Hafner, a pioneering helicopter designer, and one of my personal heroes. Hi, I'm Eugene, and I'll be telling you all about the science of flying, and we'll be doing some great experiments. Okay, here we go! Three, two, one, go! And that brings us up to the 1960s. The 1960s saw the arrival of the Army's first light helicopter, the Skeeter. Unfortunately, the Skeeter was quite small and could only carry two people. It also had limited power and couldn't fly on hot sunny days. So they were soon replaced by the Westland Scout. Both the Scout and its smaller counterpart, the Sioux, were a great success and they saw service in many parts of the world. These Scout helicopters are carrying troops on exercise in Germany. And here we can see a Sioux helicopter flying in the jungle in Belize in Central America. And here the Scout is rescuing an injured soldier from deep in the jungle. When we 
get to the 1980s, we start to see the helicopters and planes which the Army Air Corps uses today. This is the Gazelle, and it is often used for observation and reconnaissance missions. And you can see here just how good it is at hiding amongst the trees. The Lynx is the Army Air Corps workhorse. It has been in service for over 30 years and has been used in lots of roles, from troop transport and anti-tank operations, through to reconnaissance and close air support roles. It's also the only helicopter that can fly upside down, so it's a great hit at air shows. And there is a very special Lynx here at the museum. This Lynx helicopter holds the airspeed record for helicopters. In 1986 it flew nearly 250 miles per hour and it has never been beaten. So it has held the record for over 20 years. And to bring us up to date, this is the Army's latest helicopter, the Apache, which we see here on deployment in Afghanistan. That's an impressive piece of equipment, but for a helicopter to fly, it needs a pilot and a ground crew. And we'll find out just how big that team is in a later show. The Army Air Corps have served in locations across the world, from Belize to Borneo and from Northern Ireland to the Falklands. And today they're serving in Afghanistan. We've come a long way from the kites of 1900 to the high-tech army of today. And we'll be meeting up with serving members of the Army Air Corps and bringing you stories of the present day soldiers of the air. That's all from this show, but there'll be a new show every month. So join us on the next show for great adventures, fascinating history, science fun. We're at the Museum of Army Flying, and this is Young Eagles.